Good afternoon and welcome to Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. We thank you for joining us on this weekend edition. I hope that your day is going according to the will of God for your life, that you have submitted to that will, and that you are allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in everything that you set out to do today. Our scripture for today is Psalms, the 25th division. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let me let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth. And teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day long. And that was Psalms, the 25th division, the first through the fifth verse. Here at Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson, we would love to connect with you, our reading, as well as our listening audience. If you would like to connect with us via social media on Facebook, you can find our pages WTI Productions, as well as author Angel Ferguson. You can also locate us on Twitter and Instagram, on Google+, our pages Hope and Truth Magazine. If you would like to listen to our podcast after we leave the air, you can listen to us via iTunes, our YouTube channel, and on iHeartRadio. Check out The Balance of Life. And if you would like to correspond with us looking for additional information, such as our lesson for this month, pros, cons, and the reality of where you are, please feel free to email us at aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com. And if you do not have access to a computer, you can always mail us your request. Our address is 7402 North 56th Street, Suite A and B, Tampa, Florida, 33617. Today we are going to do a, a have a talk and, and a brief discussion on faith. And we are looking at our greatest example, which is Abraham. And we are coming from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And it is the full life study Bible. We're looking at Genesis, the 12th chapter. We're looking at the call of Abram and when he was renamed or transformed into Abraham and that walk of faith. I know a lot of times when we hear teachings on faith we only hear the increase your faith believing not wavering and that we are the seed of abraham and we get we are given the examples of his great faith But few and often do we hear teachings or explore the side of obedience. We are given countless teachings and and preachings, if you will, and books on the promises of God without focusing on the obedience 
in order to receive those promises. Or even to look at it to have an understanding that those promises are connected to an obligation. And what are we obligated to do in order to receive those promises? And what are we to be obedient to? For I have an understanding that faith must be immersed with obedience. Nothing else that we can sacrifice is acceptable other than obedience. We must be obedient to the will of God, to the covenant that we made with him, and that we must separate ourselves from the sins of the world. And what must we be obedient to? We must be obedient that we should separate ourselves from the ungodly things that will hinder God's purpose in our lives. And those things being worshiping other gods, putting other gods before him. For we serve a jealous God and he tells us there will be no other God before me. We must separate ourselves from sins of the flesh, being adultery and fornication, lying, stealing, covetousness, backbiting, envy, gossip, strife. We must separate ourselves from those things. And the least little thing that hinders his purpose from our lives. We are reminded that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So is this a process that happens overnight? No, it is not. It is something that we must work towards that we must apply to our lives once we come into the knowledge of the things that hinders God's will in our lives. We are therefore informed and we must apply those things to our lives. And here's something else that we're going to take a look at. If we are to follow the example of Abraham because remember Abraham's faith was counted to him as righteousness because he believed and he was obedient he didn't just believe that God called him out to seek a land that was not his Abraham didn't even know where he was going he had faith that God would lead him to this promise and he was obedient Faith and obedience are hand in hand. We cannot have one without the other. And if we are truly to be named and live as the seed of Abraham, we must possess that same quality. Without faith and obedience, the promises of God in our lives cannot come forth. And that's the reality. So we are not here to just teach on the promises of God. We are here to teach about the disobedience as well. For there is blessings in being obedient and there are also curses consequences for our disobedience everything everything that we do has a reaction there's a consequence whether it is good or bad it's up to us what we do and how we do that will determine those consequences so we're going to look at the call of Abraham and we thank you for joining us on this weekend edition of Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson, and we will return in just a moment.
If you would like to subscribe to our magazine, Hope and Truth, please visit us at hopeandtruthmagazine.weebly.com and you can subscribe for 12 issues at $36. We will mail a copy of our printed edition of the magazine directly to you. You also have the opportunity to visit Hope and Truth magazine online to read some of the articles that appear in the printed version. We cover topics, inspirational writing, business tips and tools, our branding workshops. We also offer a lesson a month from our mentoring program. advertisements and upcoming events. We also take a look at our book pick of the month. So we do have some very, very interesting things going on in the magazine that we, we pray that you enjoy, things that you can apply to your lives to help you reach your next. We did not want to just create a magazine uh, full of uh, advertisements. We wanted to provide you with some tools to equip you. We have great authors, great writers in the magazine, author Kit Swanson as well as author Chandra Mitchell and from time to time we have a guest writer as well as information from our table talk brunch where we invite a local author in to discuss their books and to give some insights. So if you would like to subscribe to Hope and Truth Magazine, visit us online at hopeandtruthmagazine.weebly.com. Today we are looking at the call of Abraham. Gaining an understanding, we are talking about promises of God and their obligations. And we are at Genesis, the 12th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now the Lord had spoken unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. We're talking about the promises of God and the obligations we have. Here in the very first verses of chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, God gave Abram some instructions and he also made him some promises. And when we reach the fourth verse, we find Abram was obedient. He received some promises. He was given some instructions. And the reaction was he was obedient. Abram was not told at this time where God would lead him. Instead, he had to journey under direct guidance from the Lord. That is a great example of obedience because we, we, we explored earlier in the week that our ways are not God's ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts and he does things that are out of the norm of what we would even think or phantom over in Isaiah 55 and 8 
it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Here God is saying, these things happen to a surety. With no doubt, they have not failed through the Holy Spirit. These things are happening. They will continue to happen. And so shall my word that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It is going to happen. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God's thoughts and ways are not those of the natural person, but human minds and hearts can be renewed and transformed by seeking him. And that's Romans 12, 1 and 2. Then our thoughts and ways will begin to conform to his. Our greatest desire should be so to live in conformity to the likeness of our Lord that everything we do pleases the God we serve. We can do this by abiding in his word and responding to the leading of the Holy Spirit. How do we respond to the Holy Spirit? We respond to the directions of the Holy Spirit and the instructions through obedience. Not trying to figure out why, did, why are you telling me to do it this way, but to be obedient. There is a reason why we are led to do things a certain way. The main reason is so that God can be revealed. So that sinners and those of the world who do not believe will come into believing. Will come into wanting to know the God that we serve. Who are the witnesses of God? We are. But we must be obedient because we are that frontline example that draws in the unbelievers. Where is our separation? What separates me from the unbelievers? It's more than my faith. It's more than me being a witness to say, I trusted God and, and he brought this to pass. And that is where a lot of witnessing starts and ends. We only give the example of, I trusted God. Even when it comes to, I'll give the example of paying tithe. It's not in the act of paying tithe because of the traditional sense. It's in the obedience. And let's go over to Habakkuk. We're talking about the promises and the obedience. Without obedience, faith is non effective. Habakkuk, and we're going to go over to Malachi. Malachi 3 and 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. 
and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Here we are given instructions. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Why are we bringing the tithes into the storehouse? That there may be meat in mine house. And I'm going to take it a, a step further. Tithes and offerings are also to help support God's work and ministers. It is a sign of repentance. In this, we are also demonstrating our love and devotion to God. Once we follow the instructions, which is obedience, believing in faith, that the outcome will be that he will pour us out a blessing. He will open the windows of heaven unto us and pour us out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for us to receive. Also, he will rebuke the devourer for our sakes and our fruit, our harvest, our hard work will not be in vain. But in order to get to the promise, we have to follow the instructions believing that those things shall come to pass it's in our obedience Abram once again he wasn't even told where he was going he wasn't told about the country you know we are a people who we, we want to know well if you tell me to leave my house exactly where am I going but if the Holy Spirit says I need you to leave the house he's going to lead you directly where to go but we want to know why do you want me to go there? We want to know what's the purpose of me going in. And we have all these questions. It could be that there's a soul waiting there for you to witness to. It could be that that something that you were seeking God for that he wants to get you in that precise place just to reveal the answer to you it could be something that he wants to show you but so many times we will not move until we get all the details we have to we have to know exactly what happened to the obedience of Abraham It had nothing to do with sacrifices, what was offered up. It was in his obedience. He believed God at his word and because he believed God at his word, he was obedient and he set out. The call of Abram, as recorded in Genesis 12, and he was later named Abraham in Genesis 17 and 5, begins a new chapter in the Old Testament revelation of God's purpose to redeem and save humanity. God intended to have a man who would know and serve him with devoted faith. From this man would come a family who would know, teach, and keep the ways of the Lord. From this family would come forth a chosen nation of people who would be separated from the ungodly ways of other nations to do God's will. From this nation would come Jesus Christ, 
the savior of the world. The promised seed of the woman, which was Mary. And there are several important principles that can be deduced from Abraham's call. Number one, Abraham's call involved separating himself from his country, his kinsmen, and his father's house in order to become a stranger and pilgrim upon the earth. In Abraham, God was establishing the important principle that his people were to separate themselves from all that hinders his purpose for their lives. That's why we separate ourselves. It's not to appear better than or superior to. It's that we want to remove the things that hinders God's purpose in our lives. Number two, God promised Abraham a land, a great nation through his descendants, and a blessing that would affect all the nations of the earth. The New Testament clearly teaches that the last element of this promise is being fulfilled in the missionary proclamation of the gospel of Christ. And that's Acts 3.25 as well as Galatians 3 and 8. We're going to take a brief break and when we come back we will look at the remainder of the principles of Abraham's call. Today on Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson, we are talking about the promises of God are connected to obedience. We'll return in just a moment. If you are looking for custom designs and logos, contact No Mercy. Better Visions of the Dream Finessers. The email address is jamesf at nomercyhmx.com. You can also follow James on Instagram at hitemup underscore Gucci. And coming soon, you will have the opportunity to visit and shop their online store for apparel. As a bonus feature of Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson, if you would like a copy of a series that we have done here on the radio, please email me at aFergusonWRP at yahoo.com as we have those series available now on CD. Subjects as Whose Vision Is It Anyway? What Does God Require of Me? And that is a three part series. And Tested, Released, and delivered in the midst of the storm. Each copy is $10. If you would like a copy of those series, please email us and we will send you a copy of that CD version of those CDs. It is our main goal here to inspire you spiritually and equip you so that you are ready for the next. We encourage you to seek the face of God for his will in your life and that you may pursue it with passion, that you will follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that you will be obedient to that call. 
Today we are talking about the call of Abraham. Keeping in focus that the promises of God are connected to obedience. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, faith must be immersed with obedience. There is nothing that we can sacrifice that will be accepted unto God if we aren't obedient. We must be obedient. And what are we obedient to? We are obedient to the will of God. We are obedient to removing the hindrances on our lives that will cause any distraction, any blockage for his will in our lives. And before we went on to break, we were looking at the principles that we could learn, that we should learn from the call of Abraham. Number one was that call involves separating himself. Number two, God promising Abraham land and great nations through his descendants. Number three, moreover, Abraham's call involved not only an earthly land, but also a heavenly one. His vision came to encompass an ultimate home, no longer on earth, but in heaven, and a city whose builder and maker was God himself. Abraham henceforth desired and sought a heavenly country where he would dwell forever with his God in righteousness, joy, and peace. Until then, he would be a stranger and pilgrim upon the earth. Number four, the call of Abraham contained not only promises, but also obligations. God required both obedience from Abraham and personal personal commitment to him as Lord in order to receive what was promised. Obedience and commitment entailed the following. Trust in God's word, even when the realization of the promises appeared humanly impossible when we can't figure it out when we can't see beyond our own next move when we can't devise a plan when we can't put the pieces to the puzzle together but we are instructed to move in such a way we are to be obedient when the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us in directions it's going to be with things that I know you're saying to look to the north, but all I see is fog. He did not ask us what we saw. He said to look. No matter what was in that area, he said to look in that area. What will be revealed to us is based on our obedience mixed with faith that in his time he will reveal what it is he wants us to see we have to learn to stop trying to rush the process we also have to learn I'm going to go back to it obedience stop questioning well, why did you tell me to go over here, Lord? Just go. If you know the voice of the Lord, as we are taught, my children know my voice. How do we know the voice of the Lord? By walking and operating in the spirit. By being renewed and transformed by our mind. By turning from our wicked ways with our heart submitting unto the will of God. That's how we know his voice. By meditating on his word day and night. By asking for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and applying 
those things to our lives through prayer and supplication seeking his face seeking his will that is how we will know the voice of the Lord also obedience to God's command to leave his home and a sincere adapt you believe that you're going to re receive those rewards by being obedient to those obligations it's just that simple in the spiritual realm but we want to make it so complicated and it is really not complicated it takes us growing into spiritual maturity but it is attainable it is something that we could reach. Number six, because Abraham possessed a faith in God that expressed itself in obedience, he is declared a foremost example of true saving faith. And that's Genesis 15 and 6, Romans 4, 1 through 5, 16, 24, Galatians 3, 6 through 9, Hebrews 11, 8 through 19, James 2, 21. Biblically, any profession of faith in Jesus Christ as Savior that does not involve obedience to him as Lord is not the kind of faith Abraham possessed and hence is not true saving faith. We must, we cannot get around it, possess obedience if you have any issues following instructions as they are given not revised to fit our own selfish ways pray about it 
be honest God this is my weak area I don't like to follow instructions pray about it take it to the Lord in prayer he knows our heart he knows the sincerity of our heart it's when we are not truthful because we think that we can devise it because no one else knows but I'm gonna fix it my way God knows he knows the heart of each and every one of us but be real with yourself as I am reading and, and will continue to read and, and study and meditate on this lesson today there are some things that I need to take before God I, I, I truly believe that everything that we discuss here on the radio that I Angel Ferguson am the first partaker I must apply these same words to my life these things that we share are are not just to share but I, I must walk in it I must apply it to me there's a reason why these things fell into my spirit it just wasn't for the sake of me talking it is because God is trying to get me to a certain place he is revealing himself all the more unto me. He is reminding me that yes, he has given me some promises. And, and even as I'm saying this a few days ago, I wrote, what are the promises that God gave to me? I know that there are promises in the word of God. I know that there are promises to organizations and ministries as a whole. But my note was, what is he saying directly to me? And here it is last night as I began to read and meditate. I was taken to this. And what stuck out at me is that the promises of God are connected to obedience. I don't take that as coincidence. I take that as that is what I need to apply to my life. And I am so grateful and honored that he loves me enough to correct me and chastise me in love and love to reveal these things unto me. I wrote the question. He's given me the answer. That is the God we serve. I don't know about you, but that that is how you seek his face. He's revealing it. It's no longer hidden. I have been informed and it's up to me to take that information and apply it to my life. So now I am no longer ignorant. I've been educated. I've been equipped. And so we pass that information on to you. And we pray that something that we said today will cause you to seek God's face. That those things that you have questions about, that you will take it before him and wait on an answer, my God. When we wait, we will not be led astray. We love you, family. And we thank you for joining us on this weekend edition of Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Until next time, stay blessed.